first topic of the term is on accessibility. And I'm going to present what I call a general theory of access. So the question is, why are we here? Or perhaps why are we here in the civil engineering building? I'm in the civil engineering building. Of course, you're not really in the civil engineering building physically, but you're virtually in the civil engineering building. And the answer is, I am here because you are here. And you are here because I am here. And why at the University of Sydney? To be able to access the best transport researchers in the world. They're physically all located within a short walk. Buildings are arranged so you can walk between them. Even though other modes of transport are faster than walking or biking, right? So the issue is what you can reach in a given amount of time, not how fast you are going. And speed is a means, not an end in transport. So I call this a general theory of access. So what is theory? Um, Wikipedia says, a well-substantiated explanation of some aspect of the natural world based on a body of facts that have been repeatedly confirmed through observation and experiment. So the general theory of access is that the only reason to locate anywhere to be near some things or people or opportunities, to be far from other things like disamenities, or to possess things. And so accessibility is what measures this. So we can ask, what do people care about? Okay, people care about jobs and shops and stores and amenities and health and parks and the beach and the outside world. These are all things that people want to be near. So people will pay a premium to be in locations with higher access to the things they care about that allows them to save time and be more productive, all else equal. And what we want to do is measure all the things that people care about and the cost of travel to reach them. Okay. And we know that accessibility explains lots of different things in the real world. So accessibility explains commuting time, Okay, how far you will be willing to travel to get to a job. And we know that, for instance, the average commuting time by automobile globally, one-way commuting time by automobile globally tends to be around 30 minutes or so in large cities. Obviously, in smaller cities, it's shorter. In very large cities, it can be a little bit longer. But it does, it's not infinity. It's not two hours or three hours one way. Um, there are limits to that. Uh, we know that accessibility explains mode shares, which choice of mode you will use, and in places where access by public transport is relatively good, more people use public transport than in places where the access by public transport is less good. We know that accessibility explains real estate prices. Real estate costs more per square meter when you're near the Sydney CBD than when you are in Liverpool or at the edge of the greater Sydney, okay? And this is a general fact. It, it's true in all metropolitan areas that the cost of land is higher near the center of action than it is far from the center of action. Why? Because you can reach more things in less time and you're willing to pay a premium in real estate prices in order to save time over the course of your duration at that site. Okay, we know that places with higher accessibility tend to have higher incomes. So larger cities have higher wages than smaller cities. Um, the argument is because people are more productive in larger cities, that there's an economy of agglomeration and that the closer together that we are with people, um, the better, uh, the more productive we'll be. And I'm gonna turn off my Slack for a second. screen sharing. And we know that ex accessibility explains investment decisions, that projects that have higher accessibility are more likely to be funded by public or private sector than lower accessibility producing projects. We saw this clearly in our analysis of the London Underground um, and the projects that was built, the project that was built first, the Metropolitan Railway added the most accessibility. And then every time they had a choice of which project to build, 
they basically build the project that added the most accessibility. Um, similar patterns show up in our analysis of the Beijing Metro. And in the Beijing Metro, um, the accessibility was higher for the first lines of the Beijing Metro than for the most recent lines. That is, you got more bang for your buck on the first lines than on later lines. So we know this is true. There's a lot of different ways of measuring access. Um, one I'm going to look at and, and focus on is what's called cumulative opportunities. And it's basically a count of destinations that are reachable within a threshold. So we could talk about the 30 minute accessibility to 10,000 jobs. Um, we can say we can reach 10,000 jobs within 30 minutes. These are equivalent statements. Um, so if you have 30, if in 30 minutes you can reach 10,000 jobs, which would be true maybe by walking in a large city or by automobile in a small city, this is how many opportunities you can reach within a given amount of time. 30 minutes is a convenient amount of time, but you could look at 15 minutes or 20 minutes or 27 minutes or whatever threshold you wanted to look at. Um, and there's lots of different metrics and maps that you could measure. Now the primal measure, um, the of, of accessibility uh, was first made popular by uh, Walter Hansen. And the way we formulate that today is A sub I, the accessibility at point I equals the sum over J of the opportunities at point J multiplied by some function of the cost of travel between I and J. And where I is the zone of interest, your origin zone, and J, J represents all of the other zones. Um, so in Sydney, you might have a system, for instance, with a thousand zones. And so J would equal one to a thousand. Um, and you would measure at I how many of those zones you could reach and sum up the number of opportunities that are reachable by them and weight that by some function. Now that weighting function can be a lot of different things. Um, in a cumulative opportunities measure, it might simply be a step function where if the cost is less than 30 minutes, we count the opportunity. And if the cost is greater than 30 minutes, we don't count the opportunity. So we'd be summing up in that case, all of the jobs, all of the opportunities that are within 30 minutes. And the summation of that would be our accessibility measure. Now the C is usually travel time, most commonly travel time, but it can be any measure of cost or a composite measure of cost. Travel time is convenient and it's important, but money is also important and there are, um, and money means different things to different people. So a um, hundred dollars means something different to me than it does to Bill Gates. And so costs like fares for public transit or taxi fares or the cost of operating an automobile differs for people. And we can look at how it differs based on, for instance, how many minutes they have to work in order to earn enough money to pay that fare or to pay the tolls or to pay the gasoline prices or to pay for parking. So we can think of costs more generally. It's not just travel time, but travel time is a convenient place to start. Um, Waldo Tobler famously said, uh, everything is related to everything else, but near things are more related than distant things. And so, as I mentioned, we have this cumulative opportunities measure where it equals one if the cost is less than some upper bound, T sub UV, and perhaps greater than some lower bound. So we could look at um, a ring and maybe you're only looking at jobs that are between 15 and 30 minutes, where our lower bound might be 15 minutes and our upper bound might be 30 minutes. And then the F of CIJ is zero otherwise, so we don't count those opportunities, okay? This is one way of, of framing the discussion. Um, so imagine we're at the white dot. We're interested in red dots. How many red dots can we get to? And if we draw a 10 minute circle around our white dot, which is the blue ring there, we can't reach any of the red dots. So our 10 minute primal accessibility is zero. In 20 minutes, we can reach two of the blue dots. And in 30 minutes, we can reach three of the blue dots. We can reach three up three of the red dots, we can reach three opportunities. And so in that case, we say our accessibility is three, our 30 minute accessibility is three. Now, again, it depends on what kind of opportunities you're looking at. Like I said, we're looking at jobs, the numbers are going to be in the tens or hundreds of thousands typically. Um, if you're looking at airports, 
it might only be one or two or stadiums. It might only be one or two. It depends on the kind of destination you're interested in. Um, but there's other ways of looking at accessibility. It doesn't have to be simply a, uh, a yes, no type of thing. And you either count it or you don't, you could weight it. And so another type of function is what's called a negative exponential function. And in this case, we have a theta sub E, um, which is our impedance factor. And this is empirically estimated, um, but it's harder to estimate. It's not necessarily constant between communities. So it makes comparisons a little bit more difficult. Um, and so just mentioning, I mean, there's lots of other functions, but we'll just keep that in mind that we have these kinds of functions. Now, that said, that's a shorthand, okay? So if we wanna be specific, what are we measuring? The accessibility at point I at time of day H for activity type Z, Z, by mode M, considering cost category C within some time threshold T for persons in subgroup P equals the sum of opportunities at J at time H for activity type Z multiplied by some function of the cost from getting from I to J at time H by mode M considering cost category C. Okay, now this is a more complete way of expressing what we're doing. And so this is here so you sort of can understand all of the different dimensions that we'd be looking at. Um, so we might say we're looking at the accessibility at 8 a.m. to jobs um, by mode M, let's say walking, uh, looking at time as our cost category within 30 minutes for everybody. And that's equal to the number of jobs that are available all day. And that's looking at the costs that occur at 8 a.m. by our mode at, with that travel time. Okay, now, a couple of points here. Okay, so we start, talk about hour of, hour of day, right? So traveling at 8 a.m., um, you're going to face the costs that occur at 8 a.m., which is rush hour, as they say. So the travel time will tend to be slower by automobile because of congestion effects than it would be at 4 a.m. Um, but if you're looking at jobs, if your job starts at 8 a.m., the job isn't really available to you at 4 a.m. So depending on what kind of job you have, that varies by time of day too. Or if you wanted to go shopping, Stores are only open during certain hours. And so the opportunities that are available to you change by time of day. And of course the costs vary by mode. You can get much farther in 30 minutes by automobile than you can by walking. Um, the costs of travel time is incomplete because that doesn't include tolls and parking costs and gasoline and other costs that you might have if you were driving. So these are things you need to keep in mind when we're looking at accessibility. So this is a map um, of accessibility by walking in Sydney. And I believe it's assuming jobs are available to you at any time of day. Um, and you can see accessibility is highest in um, the CBD area and it gets lower as you get farther and farther from the CBD. And so the accessibility when you're in the Blue Mountains is pretty low and um, it follows a reasonable, what we might call, a, decay function from the CBD out, but it's higher in some places that are farther away and lower in other places that are nearby because of the changes in local land use. Um, so that's something else to keep in mind. But if you're within the CBD, you can reach most of the jobs in the CBD and there's hundreds of thousands of jobs in the CBD, so that's pretty good accessibility. Um, if we're riding a bicycle, we can reach much more land area within the same amount of time. And as a result, the accessibility is higher almost everywhere by bicycling. Now this is assuming that you can bicycle on any road, which some people are willing to bicycle on any road and some people, except for freeways, and um, some people are not willing to bike on every road. And so if you started to restrict the bicycle network to only looking at local streets and bike lanes, you'd have a much smaller bicycle network than you will do if you assume that bicycles can ride anywhere that bicycling is legal. This is what 30 minute accessibility by public transport looks like, which is higher than walking, but not as good as bicycling. 
Um, it's obviously concentrated pretty high in the CBD area um, and a few stations that let you get to the CBD or other job centers, um, but it's lower as you get farther away from the CBD and farther away from the public transit network. And then you can see how much better it is by driving. And if you're driving, still highest if you live in the CBD or start in the CBD because you can reach all those jobs and the jobs around the CBD tend to be greater in number than the, those are much farther away because there's a higher density of employment and density of population in that area. And we can look at things like the ratio of jobs to workers within 30 minutes. So how many jobs can be reached within 30 minutes divided by how many workers can be reached in 30 minutes and in places that are um, yellow or red, that number is above one, meaning you can reach more jobs than workers, meaning that workers are imported into those areas and in places that are below one, workers are exported from those areas. So workers are exported from Western Sydney and imported into Eastern Sydney. So there's a, what we refer to as a tidal flow like the tides, traffic comes in from the west to the east in the morning and leaves from east back out to the west in the evening. Um, now, this is obviously in, done in a pre-COVID environment. Um, it's still true, although not as sharply defined as it, as it was before um, people stopped going to work as much in the CBD. So we might think of our cumulative opportunities measure. We might want to do this for multiple time slices and and weighted across times. Okay, so we can look at the accessibility at point I for different times of day and we sum up for all of the hours of the day. Um, and we look at the accessibility at 7 a.m. separately from the accessibility at 8 a.m. because at 7 a.m. it's less congested. You can travel farther in 30 minutes than you can at 8 a.m. And at 9 a.m. you can also travel farther. So you might wanna come up with some sort of weighted average of those numbers where we have to figure out what is the weight. Um, U sub H has to equal one for all day because there's basically only one day um, in a day, but each hour might be worth 1 24th or me, we might weight it by the number of people who are traveling during that hour or something else. We might wanna slice it by multiple activities. Okay, so how do we, you, you're not interested only in employment, you might also be interested in shopping or schools or other activities that you go to on a regular basis. Then we have to weight these activities and figure out how much weight they are, how important they are. This could be important for a location decision. And maybe you want to weight um, jobs as more heavily than schools or shopping because you go to work every day and you go to school less than every day. Um, but you would need to know what those weights are and you need to think about that. We might want to weight it by both of those things, and then we get a more complicated expression. We might want to weight it by different modes. So you might be using driving and somebody else might be using public transport and a third person walking. Um, and then we think about the population as a whole, there's a distribution across modes. And for some people, driving is not an available mode and for other people it is. And so we might want to think about how do we weight that? We might weight it by the availability. Okay, do you have an automobile available to you, to you? And we know on average, the automobile ownership rates in different census districts. And so we could weight it by that and look at, for the people who have an automobile available to them, their accessibility is based on the automobile. But for people who do not have an automobile available to them, their accessibility is based on the next best mode. So we might think about it that way and then we're maximizing over the modes. We might wanna look at different population groups. So accessibility might be different for different groups of people, males versus females, race A versus race B, ethnicity A versus ethnicity B, young people versus old people, disabled people versus non-disabled people. There's a lot of different subpopulations how you might want to disaggregate so you could understand what's going on more clearly. Um, low income versus high income. And so we can do equity analyses and look at the fairness of the system by looking at the different groups and combining them back together again, but looking at the different groups individually is often useful. We might wanna look at different costs. Okay, so we have the cost of travel 
Um, and we don't just have the travel time, we also have the money. We also might wanna think about externalities. So if we're evaluating a public investment, we're not just interested in people's private time expenditure and pri private money expenditure, we're also interested in their externalities. And externalities are things like air pollution and noise pollution um, and travel delay that they impose on other people. Um, and so we could be thinking about the full costs of travel. And if we think about that, that's gonna give us a different weighting than if we just look at travel time. So a mode that saves you a lot of time like automobile also tends to have a lot more externalities than a mode which is, doesn't save you very much time like walking but doesn't impose that many externalities on people. And so you look at investments considering the full cost, you might get a different answer than if you just look at the personal cost. And we can put those things all together. We get a long and complicated expression. Um, and if we wanna do this for all the categories, we're looking at weights for the activity type and weights for the time of day and weights for the modal availability and weights for the population in a particular subgroup. And this gives us maximum access that could be achieved. But we could simplify this if we want to use a matrix notation and think of these as matrices and look at a bold matrix notation where the bold A sub I is the matrix of full accessibilities at I, O sub J is the ma full matrix of opportunities and various types of opportunities, and the bold C sub I J is the matrix of full costs between I and J. And so we can look at this and compare it to the original expression. They look almost the same but this is the difference of between what we would like to measure, which is everything, and what we can actually measure, which isn't everything, because some of these things are very hard to measure. So that said, I'll just point out that we might also wanna think about this, not just at one point in time, but at many different future points in time, and then we can do some sort of life cycle analysis where we think about some sort of discounting function. Um, and this is another way that we can extend the analysis. And so what is a city trying to do? What a city is trying to do is maximize the accessibility for its residents over a long period of time, favoring times that are going to happen soon over times that are going to happen in a long time away from now, okay, in the far future. So if you're um, a mayor or you are a premier or a governor of a state, depending on what country you're in, you're most interested in the things that will happen sooner rather than the things that will happen later because the electoral system, the voting system rewards you for things that you can provide now rather than things that you provide 30 years after you're long out of office. Um, so that's why we have discounting, one of the reasons we have discounting. Um, but people in general care about um, a dollar today is more valuable than a dollar next year, is more valuable than a dollar in 10 years, is more valuable than a dollar in 30 years. And so that kind of discounting is present anyway. Now, when interest rates are low, that difference is small. And when interest rates are high, that difference is large. So if you've thought about, if you've taken a project management type class, this idea will be very familiar to you. Um, if you haven't, you should probably get familiar with the idea of discounting. So the claim here is that access properly measured explains everything about location. Um, and in theory, we can construct a measure of access to each thing, every activity, person or place, by time of day, by mode, considering all of the cost for each person, considering their unique preferences at every moment. And this is what utility theory tries to do in a sense. But in practice, we can't do that because it's too much to measure. So what we do instead is we construct a measure of access to jobs and a few other things, generally in the peak period, by automobile and transit and maybe walk and bike, considering travel times and maybe financial outlays for an average person. And it turns out the practical measure correlates reasonably well with a theoretical idea because jobs is probably the most important activity that people are considering when making location decisions, but it doesn't correlate perfectly. And so these are things we need to keep in mind as we're doing the analysis.